Hello fellow human beings and welcome to my next devlog for my game All Hail the Scroll Titan. Wait, 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 wait. What is All Hail the Scroll Titan? Good question! 10 points Fafflepuff. The game is... A post-post-apocalyptic multiplayer open-world survival game with portable base building. You play as a squirrel, build yourself some titans and fight your way through a world that once got destroyed but has managed to heal and come to life again. I do have the story worked out pretty far, but I don't want to tell too much about it as of now. And in this video I'll show you how I progress in creating the world and the environment in general. I'm going to start right where I left off in my previous video that got uh, massive feedback. Nice chair bro. Nice chair, bro. Like, dude, have you even seen my chair? It's like... <laughs> it looks good up here, but if you go down there, it's... And I'm, yeah, either too broke or too lazy to get a new one. Maybe a little bit of both. But it still works, right? Oh, but you know what they say. Never judge a game by the condition of its developer's chair. I continued with adding some grass. My environment looked pretty dull, so I thought grass might turn this whole thing a little bit around. To save some time I used the Game Ready Solution by Minions Art. Huge shoutout at this point. This whole thing works like a charm once you watch that video on how to set it up correctly. My team had started to assemble a basic level with some assets from the asset store. We really wanted to check out how the game might feel once it all comes together, so we ran around and tested some camera configurations. We even briefly thought about turning this whole game into either metric view just because it looked kinda cool without having much effort. Um, yeah, but we scrapped that. The game is about squirrels, and when I tell people about this, they immediately think about running and jumping around with a super agile athletic symphony of motion. Yeah, and we are pretty far away from it. This whole idea doesn't really fit together with this angled top-down view. Especially when it comes to climbing trees, there would be too many problems, so I'm going to turn this whole game into having a third-person kind of view in my next video. This is where you should hit the subscribe button. Next up, I started to set up a new level with Unity's terrain tools. For that, I used this fantasy adventure environment asset pack from Staggered Creations. Um, I'll link that down below. And I had this weird feeling that I'm going to progress faster with the development of the game as soon as I have some eye candy in it, because, let's be honest, programmer art sucks. Let's be honest, if you want to develop a game as well, or you are a game developer, you probably know that, don't start with art. Unless you have a very artsy game, like a visual novel, or a game that completely depends on the art style, but on something that's um, action-like, don't do that. I'm not a good artist as you can see. In fact, I've got two major game development related weaknesses. The first thing is everything that's art related and the second is shader programming. Uh, and the third is counting. But I have learned that sucking at something is the first step towards being sorta of good at something. So I just accepted the fact that I'm currently not good at those things and I try to do them anyway. So I added the terrain, formed the surface to be somewhat interesting and painted some textures on it. Somewhere in the middle of this area I started to build some kind of water replace and a waterfall right next to it. If you take a very close look at the waterfall you may may notice that there isn't any water yet. At first I tried to join the waterfall that came in the demo scene, but this sadly isn't meant to work like this. With this finished waterfall it's very hard to make adjustments. Instead I practiced some shader stuff and eventually followed the approach of Gabriel Aguiaprot. I hope this is pronounced correctly, if not, I'm really sorry. I'm pretty satisfied with the result itself, but most importantly I learned how to do a few tricks with shaders. And this will hopefully benefit me in the long run, instead of just using some finished solution. I also worked through another tutorial with an interactive waterfall shader, so I was wondering if I could just merge those two approaches into one and yeah, have one very special own waterfall shader. This might be useful if I want to add a special touch to the whole thing or maybe reveal something that is uh, hidden behind the waterfall. Tony, I just heard it inside. You eat all my <laughs> I further progress with adding more foliage, some trees, more grass and a river I took from the asset packs demo scene. Now one of the main challenges I'm facing with creating a game like this, where you can control entities of vastly different sizes, is to structure the game world in a way that it feels good to play a tiny scroll as well as a massive titan in the somewhat 
same area. It's meant to be like the scribble is small enough to deal with smaller enemies, gather smaller resources like sticks and stones and other junk, and the titan should be fighting large enemies, harvest bigger resource gatherings, maybe chop down trees, and most importantly allow the scribble to travel large distances to other environments or maybe other biomes. I thought it might be a cool idea to add areas that cannot be entered with your titan, so it gets a little more interesting if you are forced to travel away from your safety. I was thinking about a little tunnel you have to get through. For that I simply cut away some of the terrain surface and used some rocks to form an entrance and an exit. For the floor of the tunnel I used another terrain object, but this time smaller than the surface one. I painted some textures that should show the pathway through the tunnel and unintentionally ended up withdrawing something that looks like a teletubby. I adjusted the form of the terrain, added further rocks and a ceiling, and eventually decided to also add a minimalistic version of the tunnel that actually just consists of a straight path. This should make it easier for me to travel through to the other side a hundred times during development. On the other side I tried to achieve a kind of different look with those trees. I also played around with a few particle effects and some leaves blowing through the wind and a few light shafts to make it look a little more alive. Some other things I did since the last video was working a little on my modeling skills. The first placeholder titan was made with really simple box modeling techniques in Blender. I essentially just took a cube, did a ton of E to extrude S to scale operations and colored everything. I didn't bother to create animations at this point. I just wanted to program and test how the mechanics with entering and exiting the titan could work and seeing how big the titan should be in contrast to the environment. In order to eventually make the titans look good, I'm going to get into some hard surface modeling, but one thing after the other. I also worked myself through a sculpting course that I I picked up some time ago through a humble bundle and made this dragon. This was actually the very first time I sculpted something and it turned out quite good in my opinion. I was always pretty intimidated by sculpting, but there actually isn't any reason to be. At one point I'm going to create another better version for the squirrel and these skills will be helpful. Hopefully. So that's it for this video, I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions or feedback, please put those down in the comments below and maybe give me a like and tell your grandma and every person you know about this. And I hope we see each other again. Goodbye.